Okay, uh, a, a few more tools in the risk analysis uh, toolbox. Uh, this is not exactly any uh, diversion or alternative from qualitative and quantitative risk analysis. In a sense, it's a tool that can be used for um, either of these to structure the uh, creation or assessment or identification of different parts of risk analysis that you need to do, uh, different risks that you need to face. Um, in a sense, a number of these are uh, tree-based. Uh, a couple of them are, anyways. Um, anyway, the first is attack trees. Um, and uh, this, well, in a sense, you know, maybe we're we're looking at roots because what we are looking at is what does the attacker need in order to mount a successful attack on your system. Um, what are the requirements? Um, and and uh, the uh, objective, in a sense, in, in doing this kind of analysis is uh, how do we uh, deny the attacker what they need, uh, what their requirements are. Uh, so that's the uh, attack tree strategy. Um, uh, what, what are the intruders, the attackers' requirements, uh, the adversary, and, and how can we prevent them from uh, obtaining what they require. Uh, then another is uh, fault tree analysis. Um, and sometimes uh, this is known as spanning tree. Uh, it, it depends. Uh, but in any case, what you're doing here is create a tree. Uh, and here we're looking at the top of the tree, the branches, whatever. Um, all the parts, all the components of the system that we are uh, protecting. So having done that, then... Um, in terms of doing a vulnerability analysis, in, in terms of uh, creating our safeguards, countermeasures, controls, that sort of thing, uh, prune off all the branches that don't apply to this particular system. So, for example, if our system is not connected to a network, we don't have to do anything about network uh, protection. Um, you know, we... Uh, firewalls and uh, routers and, and so on and so forth. They're just... Uh, um, they're irrelevant to the protection of, of this particular system. So that reduces the uh, uh, types of protections that we have to consider in doing our, our risk analysis and risk management. So, uh, you know, we're, we're essentially pruning off vulnerability and and concentrating therefore our, our resources our attention on the remaining risks the, the ones that are there in a sense this is uh, a, a sort of a, a topical application of the idea of residual risk um, and then there is uh, this isn't uh, tree based in any way um, but one thing that comes to us from the uh, field of engineering is failure modes and effects analysis, uh, FMEA, uh, and you'll see that acronym uh, sometimes on uh, what people are doing in, in regard to risk analysis. Now, you've got to look at um, the potential failures, hence the name failure modes, or the part of the name failure modes. Um, so, if something fails, what is the effect? And we do that at three 
different levels. We do it at the level of the system as a whole. We do it at uh, the sort of subsystem level. If, if there are um, uh, chunks, groups, you know, uh, portions of, of the system that can be seen as an entity. Uh, again, you know, what, what is the, uh, the effect um, that the failure of, of this particular chunk uh, subsystem uh, is is going to have on the system as a whole. And uh, then the individual components. Now, as I say, you know, this, this comes down to the, um, uh, to us from engineering, and, and there they, uh, well, where it originated anyways, it, it's primarily concerned with the, uh, with hardware. Um, you know, so we're, we're looking at a system, a machine made up of uh, possibly subsystems, you know, in, in terms of your uh, gas-powered car engine, uh, you have a, a fuel pump subsystem, you know, it's going to be the, the pump itself, the uh, uh, piping uh, connecting things, the connection to the carburetor, and, and of course at the other end, the feed from the gas tank. Uh, so, you know that's that's a subsystem, and uh, so you look at that uh, as a part of the hardware. Now, when we're dealing with hardware, it's easier to identify what is um, a a subsystem, uh, what is a a monolithic system. Um, you know, you generally speaking have uh, clearer definitions. When we're dealing with software. Uh, it it sometimes becomes harder. Now, I mean, we've got procedural programs. We uh, are doing things, and even in in object oriented programming, um, you know, an object is is an entity, a subsystem, uh, and and so we can uh, look at this in um, in chunks in in subsystem sections um, and down to the individual components. But I mean, you know, the, the individual component in a software system can be as little as a single bit. If we change a bit in an opcode, what effect does that have on the, uh, well, the component, you know, that's going to make it, a, you know, different opcode, sometimes completely different. Um, what, uh, is a single, you know, flipping a single bit going to have uh, an effect on, on data? Um, and how is the, the system going to change with a change in that data? So it's, you know, it's going to be very much more difficult, much more complex to do that on software-based systems. But the, the idea is there. Um, the other factor is what are the effects on uh, software-based systems? Software-based systems much, much more than uh, hardware systems are subject to catastrophic failures when you change even a single bit. So uh, it's, um, it's a tool. It gives us structure and guidance in doing our risk analysis, uh, but it has its limitations, certainly, and um, it's, you know, not a, a guarantee of finding everything, uh, every particular problem, and particularly dealing with what we are going to do about those problems.